Just to get the okay, might as well be quick. Am I time wait, wait, go on. Let me am I in tune here? Dude, give me a I'm high, there we go. I gotta find out what Pull out, pull out.
was it different? Yeah. No, it was good. good. It, was, it was really good. Just what the doctor ordered. How yeah. are you feeling, man? Good. Yeah. You look good. <laughs> you look you, great. Why don't you sit down and check it out? Okay. You know? Yeah. yeah. That last one actually felt really right time. Much better than the, the other one. Yeah. yeah. Well, you always know what the right one to call. You know, you need to know. You know, you know when we got to do another one. Well, I knew it too, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to be polite. These chairs, I don't know. They, they look so good and they go so far back. I like what you do with that so much. Do you? Oh, I love it. It. Everything okay, Adam? Yeah. Adam, did you meet? Let's go. Ha <laughs> ha. 
next song? Sure. And out, or what do you want? Yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Take a whole one. Yeah. Okay, here's the format. <laughs> okay. The format this time. Your heart's going. <laughs> Here I am. I got my lip stretched over my forehead. <laughs> Not that. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. The format on this will be. See. Just a second. You just have to do this real quick. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you feel more comfortable there, man? Well, actually, but going out, I could. Uh, I would. I would. I don't know. Well, Ollie did say, "Don't, I don't play any Why work so hard? You know. Yeah. What I do when I do in Hawaii is I change horns and just play the last part on the trombone. Can I do that? Can I play the first part on your phonium? No, my phonium. Your phonium. <laughs> you can get Fisher's right to know that. Jeff, part on the euphonium, and then after Pete's chorus, I play the last part on the trombone. They would just require a mic setup for the euphonium. The mic, mic is already here. It's still here from Friday, just like we had it before. It'd be perfect. All I have to do is take the horn out. That's okay. We're, we're yep. just going to check a couple things. All right, I'm going to do that. I wonder if his mother ever had any kids that lived. <laughs> <laughs> Turn this light off now. Yeah. Um, yes. You getting hot in there? Yeah. Okay, turn it off. All right, stand by everyone. You want me to leave my light on? Yes, you can. Okay. No, I don't mean that one. I mean this one. Jim. You want me to leave this one on? No, that's fine. Hey, Tom. It's this one. It's just great. Now, Jeff. We are rolling. We're rolling. Yes, sir. We're rolling. Two, three.
Uh-huh. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. What what we should do is get everyone's name. We'll just kind of pan, get everyone's name, and then we'll just start into a little, uh, <clears throat> you know, expose on the uh, record business. No, okay. I mean, no, we'll just. My name is Chiz Harris. Well, 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 <laughs> my well, name is Chiz Harris. Let's start the left. Let's no, go my left name to right. Is Chiz Harris. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to Chiz Harris. I'm a Spartacus. I'm a Spartacus. Oh, I'm a Spartacus. Boy, I saw Gladiator the other night speaking of Spartacus. Oh, man. It's really good. It's really yeah, that's cool. My line. I think I There's a lot of blood. Your line is, my name is Jim Sherry. <laughs> okay. okay, anytime. Okay, here we go. Yep. We're gonna, we'll, we'll start over here with the original. You're on. Hi. What's the question? Nothing. What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Chiz Harris. Jim Heward. Slide eyed. Hold on, wait, I can't catch up to you that quick. Okay, one more time. Take okay, two. we'll start. Take two. I'll, I'll, I'll cue you. He's an, he's an older gentleman. We have to go slowly. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Chiz Harris. You'd be great at the hockey game. Jim Heward. <laughs> Slide eyed. Pete Chris Lee. Tom Renier. Thank you guys for being here. We understand we're, uh, we're breaking up your session, so we don't want to take too much of your time. But. Uh, it's always a joy to be with some great musicians, in certain cases guys I've known for over 30 years and have had the pleasure of being in the studio with. And, you know, if you could share with the folks that would be watching this a little bit what the, some of the differences are between recording like this in an ensemble way and maybe how some of the kids are recording nowadays where it's done sectionally and sometimes musicians come in individually. How do you prepare for a a session like this where you're all going to play together. Biggest difference is what we hardly have to prepare when we do it this way because we're all uh, on common ground. We're doing things that we've all done. If not together, uh, we've been doing it with other people all our lives and we're so familiar with it that we don't really have to prepare a whole lot. Like we sit down and say, well, name a tune and we go spend five minutes uh, making sure that we're playing the same chords and that's it roll you know it slides it says uh, uh i got the end chorus pete will play a chorus tom plays half jim plays half and we take it out that's all there is to it uh, the things that uh, are being done these days are prepared to the hilt i mean there's uh seems to be a layer to the to begin with this sequenced uh, start with sequencing stuff, then get the guys to come into the studio one by one and apply their parts so nobody sees any each other, you can't interact. We're all interacting with each other. It's, uh, it's like uh, a, a gang ESP. You know. now, now, Peter, I know that you spent a lot of years playing in the Tonight Show band and you had a chance to interact with some of the really great musicians on a daily basis on, in that band. Uh, do you think that that's something just in in general that seems to be lost in a lot of today's music the the chance for musicians to to play together like like that in a, in a great environment well uh, no I, I don't think it's lost I play in a couple of different bands I play in Bill Holman's band and, uh, where does it where does a young a great person... environment to, to, to play in musically I mean we played some of those Bill Holman charts on with the Tonight Show band. Mm -hmm. The difference is that, you know, put it practically, that uh, the nice thing about the Tonight Show band, it was a good band to play in uh, Great Cats, and it was a steady gig, too. 20 years, I don't think I'll ever see a, I don't think any of us will ever see a, a, that kind of steady gig. None of us thought it was going to go for 20 Years, otherwise, Christ, we would have saved some money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, um, we had a job to do. We put on a show first, and then the, the, the fun part was getting up and blowing and, and playing jazz, and that was during Alpo dog food commercials. So we did our best work behind <laughs> <laughs> dog food commercials, you know. <laughs> And some people actually saw, or, or rather heard us, because they had uh, uh, cable and satellite TV in the in, back then when they they didn't get the commercials. So a lot of people heard the entire, you know, presentations that we were making. Sometimes you know they'd go away and come back, and the band still be playing. You know, but we played 
200, 300, 400 bar charts during some of those mm. commercial and, and just like we were performing live for the audience and that's why we were there you know we were keeping an audience happy who otherwise would look at each other and say why the hell do we drive 3,000 miles to see a dog food to see commercial. a dog food commercial yeah. 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 see when the band's playing they can't think about that they're thinking wow listen to that you know we're making while they're selling their wire there was 50 commercials 12 minutes of show and and uh, the rest was all commercials <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'd hear the band going into the commercial. The band would start, and then the commercial would come on. I, di I didn't have the cable or the satellite, then. I just had the regular TV set. And you hear the band popping, and all of a sudden it's right. arf, arf, you, know, <laughs> sit, you know. And then when the commercial was over, ba da 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 da, -da <laughs> and that was in. The band was going out. Everything else, the audience that was there got. The people at home didn't get diddly. So like Pete says, a lot of people really didn't know unless they went to the show or they lived in California and had been around that knew somebody that was that knew somebody in the band. They figured the band only played four bars here and then they watched <laughs> the commercial and played another two bar out thing, you know, because that's what's kind of happening uh, on these shows nowadays. I mean, they, they, yeah, they play in something in. Out. You never hear the bands really stretch out. I guess Rosie gives her afternoon band a, a shot every once in a while. Johnny used to do it every night, and that was a gas, man. That's why everybody watched that show, because it was, it was fun. He was funny. The band was great. The band was the best band in the country, man. It was a great band. Yeah, hell yeah. That's so, that's... What was the question? <laughs> Are we rolling? Thought of you, take one. You want to go out that way, too? Board fate?
So now, interestingly enough, when you when you were playing uh, on on a show like that, and when you're making this kind of a record, um, you got to play these songs all the way through, no mistakes. Yeah. And this is being done direct to two track. Mm -hmm. um, this would be a very alien world to today's record maker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I guess so. But we see, I was brought up in the era where we we oh, played it all the way through with no mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Tonight Show environment was one like that. Mm -hmm. You know, the camera was on. They rarely backed up for anything. It, I mean, if there was some kind of uh, four-letter words uh, or something like that. Or a technical or, problem. Or tech, they would, you know, cut around it. The show, when we walked out the door, there was a complete show done in an hour or an hour and a half. And that's essentially what you're doing here. I mean, you, you come in and record these songs. They're done direct to two-track. Mm -hmm. No mistakes. you got to do the whole thing over again. Yeah. Um, is there something... Um, the background that you guys had, educationally speaking, for music. Oh, of course. Mostly, like, education helps, but it's the playing that we've all done together all of these years. Like Jim said, we just, uh, it's, it's the way we were raised. Uh, you know, it's just a thing to do. You, when you leave the studios, we do certain stuff in the studios, like, as, as you all know, the stuff we did, we do, you know, you could punch in, you could go back, you could do this. When you go out in a jazz club, you can't punch in and if you're playing in front of people, you know, and, and when you first start doing that, when you're young and that, you go out and you step all over yourself, you know, making mistakes. And it takes years and years till you get to the point that you're talking about, where you go direct to two track in life and try not to make any mistakes, you know. Well, a lot of us come from the time when there wasn't any multi-track recording. Sure. So back in the late 50s or the 60s, uh, a musician or a singer was signed or used because they had something that other people didn't have, mm -hmm. some talent, some ability to be able to do this stuff. Nowadays, with computers and sequencing and, and, and all the corrections that can be done, not just with time but with pitch and everything, my gosh, you can get pretty Sterile. average musicians sounding pretty good well because is it them or is it the is it the enhancement technology, of the machinery yeah. and, and the technology then this right here what we got here this is real music this is from the guys There's, the only technology is you got it, that that's happening is the two direct to two track just to capture that's high tech, tech technology what you have out here is high tech life this is sort of, sort of an extension of uh, something I think uh, the phrase or the, the word developed back in the 60s or 70s or something when there was just this bonanza of work here where everybody was working so much. The word was red eye and the red eye meant the red light. When the red light comes on, everybody, uh, uh, you know, what that means. You, you have to be perfect because if you aren't, there's 19 guys standing behind you waiting for your gig. Uh, but a red eye is also a sort of a, a, a variation on the word ready. And that typifies what all of the guys in the studios were. They were ready. When that light came on, bam, it was it, it, whatever you want. It could be Mozart. It could be uh, Willie Nelson. It could be... Uh, uh, Moby Grape, whatever it was, it was going to be right. And you got used to that. That's real important. And, and I, sure. do you think that kids today are relying too much on the correction and the technology and all that? They really don't master their acts, whatever that happens to be? They, they or don't is that have, risk there? I don't think that, that a lot of them, they don't have venues to, 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 to go where they can master their things and they, unless they sit at home and and play privately, but there's nobody I don't think that sits at home and teaches the music of today, you know, what's going on, what's being played on the radio privately. It's kind of, it's good that they have the technology, I guess, but uh, the, just time has, has robbed them. I mean, the space of time that we are now in, we're in the, we're in the second millennium, 
whereas where, where time was available to do what we, we got to share in, it's just not out there for, for some kids have to pay the club owners to play. Yeah, I that's true, that's, you know, but, and, but even and, before they get to club owners, you know, I mean, I know that when you were 12 and 15, yeah. You were practicing. You were learning how to play. Yeah, Do you think and the kids are the kids are doing that, that that too as well. But the kind of music they're going into, it's all loud. You know, they don't learn so the dynamics. I mean, just that's just one thing that I I don't mm -hmm. I don't hear them do. I don't see them do. Uh, as they grow older, they kind of really, but their kind of music doesn't have any use for dynamics and softs and louds, and and there's there's very little prettiness uh, in what I have been. You know, it's 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 kind of dark the music, it, along with being loud and and, and all that. I wish there were more for it, where there was more stuff for them to do, and perhaps again there will be. You know, there's a there's a phenomenal, if that's the right word, uh, if you look at uh, the magazines that cater to instrumentalists, like Guitar Player Magazine, Bass Player Magazine, uh, Keyboard Player Magazine, if you just look at those, if we look at them with the uh, information that we've gathered over the years, it looks like, what are these people totally illiterate? I mean, <coughs> the way these magazines are written, uh, I don't bum wrap them because they serve a purpose. Uh, and they should be around, but if you look at the uh, the common denominator that they've aimed at, it's like it's so far below. It's like it reminds you of what you were doing when you were nine years old. You know, it's like people that are all but totally illiterate. They, they have tablature for guitar players and bass players. It's so elementary, so rudimentary that it's like you wonder if these people really had any training at all, and if they did. Uh, what happened? I mean, <laughs> they never went beyond step one. Do you think that sometimes, huh? Okay. Do you think that sometimes they're just looking for instant gratification and they just want to get like a microwave kind of thing? I want to get good enough to be on MTV. Absolutely. I think that that's, uh, that's what's made popular music what it is today. It's, it's, uh, it's every man's music. Anybody can do it. It's just about, uh, being in the right place at the right time for most of them. My son has been in uh, a bunch of bands and my son is uh, mostly musically illiterate because he didn't think he had to learn that stuff even as much as I tried to teach him. He said, no, I don't need to do that. And he didn't. I mean, all they have to do is uh, find the right combination of things and they can become big, wealthy stars with practically no training at all and no knowledge. If you had to give, like, just to wrap this up, I know you got to get back to recording, but a little piece of advice. What do you think you'd say to the, the new musician, the younger person, the, the more Don't inexperienced? What would you, what, what's the Stay best? Stay ahead. Yes. Don't give up. Stay yeah. ahead and strive for tone, but learn as much <clears throat> as you can, because there's going to come a day when you're going to get older and you're not going to be playing as loud as you possibly can. You won't be in the clubs with the teenagers. And you got to be able to do something. So learn as much as you can, along with going straight ahead and never giving up and playing, but learn. Learn. There's a lot of facets to music. There's a lot of dimensions to music. And the way I look at it, the blessing, one of the great blessings about it is that there's no end to what you can learn. And uh, no matter how much education you've had, you can keep learning. And there's no boundary line to what you can create. So I think that uh, I think we all probably would agree that as we get older, we still learn. We're always learning. Keep an open mind and uh, and growing. We're and doing it while we're about. playing tonight. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think it's also important that, that kids keep their focus. Uh, if if the focus starts out being music, it should continue to be music and not the lifestyle. I mean, there's uh, just countless cases of kids who have bit the bullet, you know, that they've gone down because of the lifestyle. They, they buy themselves a set of drums or a guitar or something and say, okay, where the where the booze and the dope and the broads, you know, and, and they disappear behind that. Now, if you're into music, 
stay focused on the music and don't let the other stuff uh, make you lose your your determination. That's great. Because that side of music can and has destroyed a lot of <clears throat> a lot of bands, a lot of a lot of kids too.
See this? Yeah. If they, they said, uh, the "Who wrote on the, who wants to be a millionaire?" Who who Duke or Doc? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's funny. I don't know, but it was in a gay place. So yeah, that's so we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Jim Hewer, and I'm Slide Hyde. I'm Pete Christie. I'm Tom Rainier. Vertical, Vertical jazz, jazz, rise to the occasion. <laughs> Thank you. 